735. Great. I'll take two. Welcome, everyone. It's 735, and I'd like to call this meeting of the Madison Public Schools Board of Education to order. Could we please all rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, everyone. And um, before we begin our regular order of business, I think it's only fitting that we uh, reflect back uh, for this um, over this last year, um, where I think our district has um, gone above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, I think everybody in our district from top to bottom, teachers, administrative staff, students, paraprofessionals, custodians um, have done well. So I would like to formalize as a board, I'd like to formalize our appreciation for everybody in the district. And um, so we have a proclamation and uh, we'll start with Emily. Whereas our teachers tackled a radical transformation in instruction with grace and determination and. Whereas our paraprofessionals supported our teachers and students to ensure their collective success and. Whereas our nurses worked diligently to keep our students healthy and our schools open for in-person learning and. Whereas our bus drivers transported students safely while navigating numerous new COVID-19 protocol and. Whereas our custodians strive to keep our buildings clean and safe and. Whereas our cafeteria staff showed flexibility and kept our students fed and. Whereas our administrators, our administrative staff worked Tire, tirelessly to help open the district while supporting our whole school school community and whereas our administrators courageously led the district through an unprecedented challenge in education therefore let it be resolved that the madison board of education asks the madison community to join us please in recognizing the extraordinary efforts of the entire madison public school staff during the covid-19 school year and be it further resolved that we, the Board of Education, express our deepest gratitude to the entire Madison Public School staff for their unwavering dedication to the academic success and emotional and physical well being of our students. So, in witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of Madison to be herein affixed. So. All right. So, a well deserved hand for our district. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is our regular school and community session. And um, this is where we ask for public participation. And Emily, once again, I'll ask you to take over. Yes, thank you. So the board welcomes public comment at our meetings. When speaking, please state your name and address. Comments are limited to three minutes in order to ensure that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak. Please speak on one topic per public comment session. The board is happy to hear from our community, but as a business meeting, it should not be expected that the board or administration will respond. Neither of the public comments this evening will be a time for public discussion. Um, if necessary, the community member will be contacted for follow-up. And if you would like to have your comments read, you can, um, well, you can raise your hand if you'd like to speak now, or you can also put them in the Q&A. Do we have any members of the of the public who would like to speak? We have no hands raised at the moment. Okay, and I did want to share quickly that we do hear from members of the public via our contact the board website or via emails to the to the full board. And we did receive two communications this week to the entire board via email or through the contact the board website. We're asking questions about mask policies for the next year. We always welcome communication from the public. Thank you. 
Thank you, Emily. And we'll have another chance for um, public uh, audience response later on in our agenda. Um, with that, we'll turn to um, the, uh, the internal perspective from our students. We have Isabel and Eric Dillner, our student representatives. And Isabel, I flip the coin and I'll, and I'll have you lead off. All righty, I'll start today. So we're just finishing up the year. We have exams for underclassmen starting tomorrow and going through Friday. We're gonna do exams this year, like in a traditional year. So it's a half day for grades nine through 11, and you'll have two exams a day. So it should be nice because we'll have afternoons free and teachers have been asked to refrain from giving exams when possible and to use that time as instructional time and to wrap up coursework and things like that. So it's a little more relaxed than in a typical year, which is really nice to finish off such a crazy year. Summer work for AP and some honors classes was recently released online for all underclassmen. So that will be due at the beginning of the summer and students are just starting to reach out to teachers to get textbooks and things like that for next year. They're already rolling into next year pretty fast. Uh, awards were mailed to underclassmen, so the seniors did their award ceremony in person, but just because of COVID, on uh, all the underclassmen, grades 9 through 11, got theirs by mail. And cost officers have been chosen for next year. We did elections and the results have come back. So once we start in the fall, we'll start meeting with that new group of class council members. And that'll be nice, fresh voices in our school leadership is always wonderful. And this is a little plug on my half. I'm a member of the Junior Class Council and we are doing a fundraising car wash on Sunday at the Madison Service Center from nine to 12. So if any lovely Madison citizens would like to come support us, we'd be very grateful for any support. I'll hand it over to Eric. And thank you. So uh, continuing, we had the NHS or the National Honor Society inductions this past week. There were a lot of recipients between the senior and junior class uh, and a lot of awards given out that night um, as it's a big accomplishment to have made it that far and keeping up grades and leadership and being a part of your community. It's amazing that so many people in Madison were able to uh, kind of keep that standard. Also, uh, sports are doing quite well currently. We're wrapping up all the all of the sports for this year. Um, as being a golfer during this time of year, I'm happy that the golf team won uh, D2 states. And I know a lot of other teams are doing a, a really good job right now uh, and winning a lot of awards. Um, we also have the senior prom, which just happened this past Saturday, which I partaked in. It was a really fun time. It was over at Anthony's Ocean View, which when you walked out the back porch, it looked like you were in Florida uh, and it felt like you're in Florida. The food was good, the dancing was fun. And we all had like a really great time. And it was like, um, I'm really glad that we got to do that because I know last year, people, a lot of seniors didn't get to have that. So I was really happy we got to do that. Also, now we're moving on to graduation preparations today. I picked up my cap and gown and uh, tried it on for the first time and hung it up. So I'm, I'm getting ready to go for uh, graduation Friday. That's all that we have for this week. Well, Eric, uh, congratulations on the state golf championship. In addition to your other honors this year, and I'm kind of detecting the theme here with great hand-eye coordination that you must have, you know? <laughs> so um, that's really outstanding. Um, by the way, um, I know there is a one question from the audience, I'll just just ask that we um, wait till after the superintendent's report, and then we'd be happy to um, resume the, the this conversation with the public. But in the meantime, does anyone have any questions for Isabel or Eric? I just wanted to wish Eric the best. Thank you so much. Is today our last day with um with is Eric's last day today? Yeah, he graduates Friday. That's true. Okay, I thought maybe he'd stick around a little longer. Okay. Well, Eric, you have been quite a model for this role. And um, it's kind of sad to see you go because, um, but you really set the bar high for others. And um, congratulations on all of your honors. 
uh, I watched you receive um, your awards at the award ceremony and I was very proud. And you have been a wonderful addition to our Board of Ed and you, I can't wait to see all the great things you'll do. Thank you. And I'm, I'm happy to still stay around since I'm going uh, to school in West Haven and University of New Haven. So I'm definitely going to stick around and try to be wherever I can. So. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next up is our um, superintendent's report, Dr. Cook. Thank you, Chairman Kelly, and uh, um, thank you for uh, the board for the opportunity to share the report tonight. Uh, just wanted to share the last two days we did have early dismissal as the as the board's aware, the heat um, combined with mask wearing requirements in the buildings created very difficult conditions. It did reach 87 in, in some of the classrooms at uh, Jeffrey seems to be the, the warmest place that um, we had district wide, but it was 87 in there this afternoon. Um, ultimately, as the board knows, we need heat, we need AC in our, our buildings, and, that, and we know the board's been working towards that goal. Instructional time is so important, and we don't like to give up any instructional time as we go throughout the throughout the year, especially difficult at this time of the year. Um, and we know this was a hardship for our families, and we try to minimize that as much as possible. But hopefully, they understand. And I know you know many have reached out and expressed that. Um, combined with the mass wear requirements and the, the humidity, it was very difficult. Um, it has been great being a, able to attend uh, quite a few end, end of the year events. I've uh, been impressed with the efforts of our teachers and administrators to ensure these events happen. Uh, the Daniel Hayen School Awards and Scholarships was particularly impressive. We just came from our um, retiree recognition, which was just a, a tremendous event, and also thrilled with both the, the junior and senior proms. Um, Principal Salatari reported this was uh, one of his favorite senior proms ever, and, and you know students really seemed to enjoy the event and had three different spaces to, to utilize. So it was really sound like it was uh, a lot of fun. As Eric shared, um, our spring sports teams have just um, been tremendous. Our boys track was a state finalist. Girls track finished seventh in the the states. Boys golf won uh, the state championship as as Eric shared. Girls tennis won the state championship as, uh, as um, you know, as, as I shared previously. Um, my understanding too, looking back on their events, they were rarely challenged throughout the throughout the year too, and, and they just really um, were a very strong team. Baseball won tonight, so they are on to the finals. They will play. We will strongly, strongly advocate, obviously, for Saturday um, with graduation on, on Friday. Um, Typically, they like to put the Class L teams on Friday night because it's one of the, it's the biggest draw. Typically, and I know we'd be a big draw for um, CAAC, but I, I know uh, uh, you know our principal and athletic director were ready to put that in immediately, and they do recognize you know that uh, graduation is uh, is very important. So we um, expect that lacrosse is playing right now. I have not received any updates on that. Um, boys tennis um, had a heartbreaking loss in the semifinals. And uh, boys volleyball it had advanced to the, the quarterfinals as well. Many of our um, athletes received all state and all conference um, recognition. As I mentioned, graduation is, uh, is approaching Friday evening. I uh, checked in with the principal. We are watching the weather and do understand that it's, uh, it's rare we move it off the, the scheduled date. If we did have to due to weather, it, we would announce that on Thursday because our um, technology company comes from Rhode Island. We do have them arranged for Saturday as well. Um, but as uh, as shared with me, unless it's uh, thunderstorms expected or occurring, we would we would go with the, the Friday, even if it's raining slightly. Um, so some really exciting year end events as I uh, as I shared. Um, I was asked to put on our use of um, professional development funds for 21-22. I just want to remind the board too, and, and, and as administrators, we're reminding our, ourselves of this. Last year, we had extra days granted by the, by the state. So we had six days prior to school starting to have professional development. Um, you know, last year, we will only have three this year. When you include convocation and um, required state training, that basically takes out one day 
of the of the three and so we really are limited in terms of uh time um it's probably really our biggest limiter uh, versus uh um, funds um also we have nasc occurring at uh, daniel hand and so that is um you know a major focus of any professional development time for the for the school as it is for any school going through that that process so we did want to provide the board with uh with all our work and i i will share um even today, I was able to sit in with um, our, our coaches reviewing our elementary language arts and math curriculum, and they were planning for, for next year, just really high level planning and, and work on, on uh, part of the team. And you know, just really impressed with what they were uh, um, working and adjusting. And that's uh, work we do every, every year. But I'm, uh, um, Gail and I are able to answer any questions regarding um, you know, that, uh, that list and happy to take those now or at the end of my my report, whatever the board prefers. I've got just one question um, regarding the uh, both the contract and the calendar. Is it possible to have more than three days? And and you know I'm thinking in particular having been on the policy committee and those additional days on the calendar. Um, the, the extra days sort of that we have built in, it, is it possible to shift that to PD or, or some similar practice? Yes, absolutely. Um, oftentimes, if, if something's going on a certain year, you may shift a student day with consultation with the, the teachers union to a um, professional development day. We have 183 student days. So there's that um, possibility. We do have um, a relatively long, in terms of Connecticut, um, teacher work year. So um, I'm not sure that likely that we could add days, but we could certainly look at, at shifting. And then as well, um, oftentimes half days may be worked into the calendar to provide early release for, um, for time during the year. And that oftentimes is um, important because it, it spaces it out through the, through the year. Many times after a couple of days of professional development, Teachers are ready for to see the students. I know this past year, even given the COVID, you know, concerns, they were they were ready, you know, to to get students in, and and so we always try and balance that as well. Yeah, it might be useful for policy. I'd encourage the committee to think about that. Um, I know it's hard to believe that it's almost time to start that process for the following school year. Correct. Um, but something I'd encourage them to think about as they bring that back to the board. Yeah, okay. thank you, Greg. Thank you. All right, so I'll, I'll move on. If any questions come up later, we're happy to answer those uh, for the board. Um, it, is, uh, it, it is sad this time of year when we, we see our student rep leave. Um, Eric, I still remember my first meeting, you were very, uh, very kind in your um, welcoming of me as, as, as superintendent. And normally we'd be together in the, in the same room, you know, throughout the, throughout the year, but I did feel like I got a chance to, to know you well through through Zoom and, uh, you know, limited times. I, I got to see you outside of uh, outside of Zoom and in, in person. Um, just, you know, incredible uh, um, commitment. And I'm always impressed that um, being a board representative is a, is a huge undertaking, a lot of time, but, and it's typically our busiest students at the high school. So when we think of what Eric is involved in and, uh, and certainly, um, Isabel um, and what you know she's involved in at the, at the high school. They're super busy, and to add on, you know, just about every other week on a on a Tuesday night and another meeting. It's just just tremendous, and the updates have been, you know, phenomenal. So um, I'm I'm sorry to see you leave the board. I'm happy that you're you're graduating, and I'm also pleased to know that you're close by. And I hope you uh, hope you stay in touch. And I'm, I'm sure I'll see you at athletic events, you know, as we. Uh, as, as we go forward. So thank you, Eric, for everything you've, uh, you've brought to the board. Thank you. I've had a great time being on the board. That's what we hope every board member says at the end of their tenure as well. <laughs> so um, Isabel, um, thank you for your, uh, your I also re remember you, um, you know, recognizing me when I, I first started and um, also had the opportunity to be involved with other meetings. And, you know, again, I, I just 
very impressed with your your academic course load and then your other opportunities and uh, um, clubs and and activities that you're you're engaged in. I know uh, um, you're quite a well respected student at the at the school by staff and students, and I know you great bring a great perspective to the to the board. So thank you. And we look forward to keeping you with us for next year. It was a very good year. Thank you for your perspectives. And we also are fortunate to recognize our, our new student rep and um, what I think is all, um, a unique piece of the, the, the process is that there's a um, interview process that the, the students go through and um, the board chair sits on that interview uh, process. So I know Gail and Callie will have a few things to say. Um, I know um, some things about Lucy through a, a recommendation and information submitted by Brian Bodner. So I just wanna read that for the, for the board. So Lucy Fitzinger is um, part of the class of 2023. Um, we are pleased to have, share that Lucy is a, um, will serve on the board of education as a student rep for the next two years filling the position vacated by Eric Dillner, who's graduating on Friday. Lucy is new to Daniel Hand, having transferred to our school this September. Through her application, she impressed the selection committee with her enthusiasm to be a member of the school community and by her desire to serve and give back to the community that was so welcoming to her. Her participation at Hand shows she is committed to having her actions speak louder than words. Lucy carries a rigorous course load and is a member of three sports teams, volleyball, basketball, and softball, as well as members of two clubs, Caring of Connecticut and the Com Camaraderie Club. We're excited to have her join Isabel Miguel as Board of Education student representation. So um, again, Lucy is one of the, the busiest students at Daniel Hand and we're, uh, we're thrilled to have her. Um, Gail. Well, thank you. I, I have to say I was so impressed by the caliber of all the students who applied. It really was um, just a great testimony to our school. And the essays that students wrote um, were, were very knowledgeable. Uh, Lucy, I was struck by just how perceptive and articulate um, you were with your observations. And um, I did give you the chance to say, no, thank you, because these are long meetings, but you, um, you were, you're brave and, and, and I'm thrilled that you accepted. And um, I'm so looking forward to your, your insights and, um, and, and time on the board. So thank you very much. And if, if you'd like to say a few words, please go right ahead. Um, I'd just like to say thank you both for that really nice welcome. And I'm definitely looking forward to the next two years as a student rep. Well, welcome aboard, thank you. Welcome. And Lucy, whether we're on Zoom or in, in person, you are always welcome to stay for the full meeting, but we also understand sometimes you may have to uh, log off or, or leave the meeting to, um, to do homework or get ready for a, a test. So, but thank you uh, and welcome. And I realized I skipped uh, 5.1. Um, I was so excited to share information about our students. Um, on the agenda tonight is possible action on a recommendation to uh, um, purchase the Jansen property. The board has discussed this several times um, in the board of um, selectmen have um, given some input as well to our, our first select woman. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, it's pretty well known, but the first, uh, the board of selectmen asked for the board to make a motion to um, support the, the property purchase. And so that's what we are asking the, the board for um, tonight and any uh, negotiations would occur with the first select woman and the uh, um, property owners also involving um, myself and, and Bill McMahon. So that's an agenda item later on in the, in the list. So that completes my report. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cook. Um, uh, do we have any board member comments on what was dis discussed or briefed? All right, hearing none, um, I'd like to uh, open this up to audience uh, response um, to any information that was presented. I know that we had a, uh, a hand raised from one of our attendees, uh, Mr. Rosea, if he's still there, um, this would be an opportunity. Um, yep, thank you. 
and Wendy, I'll let you um, guide him. Sure. Uh, Steve, you're all set. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I just, you know, this is a great season uh, for our students, our school district, you know, athletics, everything coming to an end, our summer coming here, uh, a lot of excitement, but unfortunately tonight I'm sitting here very frustrated. I have a daughter in kindergarten and I have two young boys and we're expecting our fourth child come October, which we're very excited about, but I'm not very hopeful for our future here in Madison. I'm really upset with mass policy. I, I, I can't sit by silently any longer. Every morning I struggle to put my daughter on the bus. She's crying, she's upset, and I'm heartbroken. My daughter goes to school at Jeffrey. Tents were established, put up outside, and she has barely used them, she reports to me. Um, and the, the reason that I understand is that we have a, an online friend, is the way that it's put, uh, who's distance learning, which I completely understand. You know, that should be an option for a student in this particular time. Um, but, you know, it should not hinder the class from going outside for uh, a class out, outdoors, enjoying the fresh air, especially as our, um, as our spring season has, has been rather pleasant. Um, mass breaks, you know, she's not offered mass breaks nearly as much as we've been told that she should. Um, we've called in and tried to, you know, get more insight and, and help our daughter to understand that she can, you know, that she can raise her hand and go out before a mass break. She's been told to go sit in the bathroom with her mask off. And she came back to me again crying, stating that, you know, she can't bear to enjoy fresh air in the bathroom. You know, that seems very um, obvious to me um, and, and really frustrating to hear as a parent that this is where my daughter's uh, being told to go to take her mask off for relief. Um, leading to today, field day outside at Jeffrey. Um, a really fun day, it should be for the children. Um, with masks on outdoors at this particular point in time, I understand that there are regulations going on in the state, uh, federal things going on, you know, uh, but this is an outdoor event. The children are, uh, in my opinion, extremely safe being outdoors. My family goes to the surf club a couple times a night, uh, a couple times a week, excuse me. Um, my children have not been wearing masks there for a long time, uh, actually ever in my, you know, and that was the choice that my wife and I made, uh, not to hinder them that way and in their growth and development as people. I think that seeing people's faces, smiles, sadness in their eyes, um, you know, it, it's, it's too much for me to, to force them to wear a mask all over the place. Um, today at, at field day, you know, she had a lot of fun uh, enjoying the events, but later on had to go to the nurse's office because she felt sick. She had a headache. She was uh, not feeling well um, because she was uh, overheated. Um, we didn't get a call either, my, my wife nor I. Um, you know, this is something my daughter told us uh, after she had gotten home later in the day. Yesterday, uh, again, the heat being a, a problem with the masks in the school and, and the, you know, the lobbying for the air conditioning in, in the schools, I, I understand where we're at as far as that's concerned. I do think that the district could have handled it better. I know that a number of school districts uh, chose to make that call earlier on Sunday evening and, and for Monday morning rather than sending students in. Um, I had to take a half day off of work. Um, I dropped my boys off at daycare after getting my daughter on the bus and subsequently uh, got out. I'm a home care physical therapist. I got to see two patients yesterday. I spent you know, a couple hours after that trying to rearrange scheduling um, with patients who missed visits. Um, so I was out of work by half a day. Um, which I cherish. I cherish my time off with my family. Um, we could we, we send our boys to a home daycare. We, we could have made arrangements to send my daughter. Um, and again, this is this is one day, one episode. Um, but I think that there's been um, a lot of a lot of misuse of of time off. Uh, you know, early dismissals, remote learning being um, something that I am not looking forward to uh, any inkling of next year. Um, I think that it's a, it's a poor, poor way for our students to learn. And um, as we move forward into the fall planning, um, I would encourage uh, the board and everybody else involved in the planning to avoid uh, any, any uh, incorporation of remote learning whatsoever. Um, it leads me to my question. I did call into the superintendent's office um, earlier this morning 
Um, and I did, you know, speak to somebody uh, that was very pleasant on the phone. Um, and my inquiry, inquiry was about uh, the mask policy going forward into the fall. And uh, if there's anybody that is able to speak on that now, um, uh, I'd love to hear the, the thoughts going into the fall season. Uh, mine being that, you know, teachers and staff are, are uh, vaccinated or have had the option to be vaccinated. Uh, there's a low risk uh, between transmission amongst students. Um, and I would really advocate that um, our students go back to school without masks going forward. Um, and, and I've, again, been uh, on the phone at Governor Lamont's office um, and been instructed to contact my superintendent's office and vice versa. You know, I've heard, I've heard that, um, you know, we're not in charge of that decision, that that's going to be something that's handed down from the state. So uh, who is in charge here uh, in this state? Um, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm at the point where I'm, I'm pretty frustrated, um, as, as many uh, of my peer parents are. And um, I just felt that it was important that uh, it's brought to light um, rather than on some ugly Facebook forum where people are name calling and um, not, not really any official um, capacity. So uh, thank you for the, for the time to make my comments and uh, please take them into consideration going forward. Yep. Yep. Thank, you. thank you. Go ahead, Emily. Good. I say thank you very much. And I, Dr. Cook, not to put you in the spot, if you want to clarify the state's uh, DPH's role with masks and maybe what what might be uh, on board for next fall. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the um, opportunity and thanks for joining the meeting, uh, uh, Stephen. So, what my what I have shared with with families is that we my recommendation would be we follow what what DPH and um, CSD Connecticut State Department of Education lays out for us in terms of mass requirements. That's what we have done this year. And that is my understanding of which all districts will, that, that I have at least spoken to. Some have come out and said it a little different, differently. They have said, we will not require masks unless we're re, you know, required to by DPH or um, CSD. With all that said, I mean, we are following this very closely. Um, we certainly have, have lifted many restrictions and are planning to lift many more as we go into next year. And so our 100 page reopening plan that was in place for this year will be, you know, much shorter, like in five, six pages, maybe, you know, up to 10 if we need to clarify things, but it's uh, uh, much less restrictive. New York State has um, shared that they're not requiring masks next year. I know other states have, have followed suit. I know Connecticut and New York have been very um, closely linked in terms of their response to uh, um, COVID. I, I very pleased with how masks allowed us to uh, um, keep schools open this year. I think that was very critical. And, um, but we are we are hoping as well that we get some some clear guidance from the from the state, and um, we you know we would uh, pass it along as soon as we can. You know, it's putting us in a in a difficult spot not having that that guidance. But it you know it is looking I would say better and better that 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 will indicate that um, there won't be that requirement for next year. But again. You know, I have, I have not received any official communication on that. Thank you, Dr. Cook. Um, okay, our, um, moving along, um, our Board of Selectmen, um, Mr. Murphy uh, has put in his time this morning and is not here. Um, we do have a consent agenda concerning line item transfers as of June 8th and budget expenditures as of June 4th. Um, and uh, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. All right, thank you, Greg. To second, Violet. Uh, is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions, motion carries nine, nothing. Thank you. Um, next up on our agenda are the board committee reports, um, starting with our uh, curriculum and student development led by Dr. Uh, Diane infantine Vice. Diane, it's all yours. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, the curriculum and student development uh, committee met on June 1st. Um, we had a presentation regarding the social studies curriculum and instruction uh, for K to eight. 
by Mr. Christopher Pagliuco and on the high school level by uh, Mr. Peter Nye. Um, so with regards to K-2, Mr. Pagliuco discussed approaches for teaching grades K-2 to and grades 3-8 to eight social studies. The unit titles and examples were given for each grade, discussing how studying history is approached at each level. Grades 3, 4, 5, and 8 emphasized U.S. history, and grades 6 and 7 emphasized global issues as required by the Connecticut State Standards. Mr. Nye, I'm sorry, I really want to call him Mr. Nye, the social studies guy. <laughs> but anyway, um, Mr. Nye discussed the high school approach to U.S. history being chronothematic and civics as um, problem identification. The high school history topics were discussed in detail. Students are asked to champion a cause for their final PBA in civics with emphasis more on a plan than actual action. The idea that courses are to be thought provoking rather than thought policing was discussed, allowing students to support their ideas regardless of stance on any issue. The topic of critical race theory was brought up but was unable to be thoroughly discussed due to time constraints. A follow-up meeting to discuss this will be scheduled in the future with the committee as there is very high interest in this topic. A presentation was then given by our assistant superintendent, Gail Dowling hench and Becky Frost on um, the Connecticut State Department of Education Social Emotional Universal Screen. Um, Gail discussed the accompl accomplishments this year, including suicide prevention training of the staff at Paulson and Hand, the introduction of Wellness Wednesday at Hand, the ongoing partnership with Medicine Youth and Family Services, and the Whole Child Subcommittee work. Becky Frost, as part of the Whole Child Wellness Subcommittee, discussed the universal screening as something that the committee was interested in utilizing. Madison Public Schools is now applying for the SEM universal screen with goals to improve social emotional learning skills and habits in K-12 students. The statewide voluntary SEL assessment would provide a universal screening with follow-up assessment, progress monitoring, reporting, and provide resources as well as professional learning for district leadership and educators. The universal screen utilizes the DESA mini to flag students at risk. This is completed in K-8 to by the teachers in approximately one minute, done three times a year, and allows for progress monitoring. Flagged students would receive additional support, including the full DESA assessment, this provides usable data at all levels, i.e. by class, by grade, by school, and by district. It allows for focused interventions by whole class, small group, and individually. At the high school level, the DESA High School Edition has students self-report and offers them personalized strategies. The current timeline for the universal screening has been delayed by the state. Madison Public Schools has the application submitted and is awaiting the state's reply. After approval, training for the district and the school lead teams, as well as the administration, must occur before implementation. And then uh, the last thing was that Joanne Friedberg will be providing the trauma-informed training in August of this year. End of report. Gail, did I miss anything? No, you did not. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Diane. Um, board member discussion? All right. Thank you. Hearing none, we'll move on to our communications committee led by Dr. Tom Pellegrino. Thank you, Gail. The uh, communications committee met this evening. Uh, we have three agenda items. The first agenda item was a review of the end of year communication process. Uh, so highlighted some of the uh, anticipated communications coming out at the end of the year and underscored the encouragement for uh, families and members of the district to uh, pay attention to the e-notifications coming out. And Dr. Cook also mentioned as an example, um, you know, any changes with regards to potential graduation changes and end of year notifications. Uh, Rita Bond, our webmaster joined us to talk a little bit about accessing information uh, through the web and fielded some questions along those lines. Uh, Dr. Cook also talked a little bit about uh, as we approach the next academic year um, to expect uh, both our census verification in August as well as uh, information to all families as about to where to go uh, to receive information and about what types of information will be provided through different uh, resources that will be coming out in August. And Dr. Cook also posed the uh, question and thought process about uh, offering up a newsletter as sort of a uh, uh, an additional point of communication 
to come from the superintendent's office. So we talked a little bit about that as well. Uh, second on the agenda, the um, central office previewed a new logo uh, for the Mac Mass and Public School uh, system. And uh, Zoe was good enough to share that with us. And uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about it. Uh, the color scheme alone is a, a real nice improvement, uh, but we'll be hearing more from the central office on the logo. And finally, for our shortened agenda tonight, we talked about the referendum. Uh, Dr. Cook did a, a really nice job of taking uh, the Board of Education as well as the uh, public through uh, sort of the framework and the scaffolding for the referendum process um, earlier, a couple of weeks back. Uh, he talked a little bit about some next steps, um, in particular, taking up the uh, recommendation uh, from Emily, uh, as well as uh, Greg to uh, do a one page uh, frequently asked question sheet out to the public and also to take advantage of the thought exchange uh, to solicit information. And uh, Galen also contributed the idea that um, it's really it's going to be important to continue to put on information about the numbers and to do sort of retail marketing and just let people know what the facts are. Uh, both Dr. Cook and Galen were commended for their efforts to get the information out in a very user friendly way, uh, both in these meetings as well as with the media. We concluded at 530. Uh, that's the end of the report, unless I missed anything. Oh, thank you, Tom. That was very good. Thank you. Um, thank you both. Do any board members have questions or comments they'd like to address? When can we see the new logo? I'm, I, <laughs> it's going to be a surprise, Katie. Um, <laughs> No, uh, so shared it tonight. I think we can we can have it available for the uh, full board at the next meeting. It, it's uh, it's pretty nice, and uh, I think there was some nice thought put into it as well. I'll leave it to Dr. Cook. It's his logo. <laughs> We'd be happy to share, but we had, um, as as Tom said, you know, incorporated some uh, color schemes that I think you know the board had indicated they were more interested in. So. Um, we're, we're excited. We wanted to roll it out to the communications committee first, and then we'll, we'll share it with the full board. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up is, uh, our finance committee, uh, led by, I'm sorry, facilities. Thank you. Um, we have facilities led by, uh, Emily. Thank you. I'm going to actually pass the report on to Katie, who graciously stepped in to chair the committee meeting for me last week. Sure, I'm happy to. So the facilities committee met. Um, we were joined by Bill McMinn who provided an update to the committee on the unfortunate malfunction at the high school um, with a hot water heater. Um, I just want to um, pass on the board's thanks to the custodial staff and our own superintendent for being there at 2 a.m. to both assess the problem and mitigate damage. Um, unfortunately, there was some damage to the West building, including the heater itself, controls, plumbing, ceiling tiles, um, some weight room equipment, um, rugs. Um, so the insurance adjuster is working um, with uh, Mr. McMinn and um, we will have more information to come on what the estimates are of the damage. Um, but Suffice it to say, the kids were um, welcome back in school the next day. So I'm grateful um, that the quick action um, was able to um, really keep the damage to a minimum. The CIP plan is due on July 1st. Um, Mr. McMinn requested that the facilities committee add some meeting times prior to this to look closely at the 10-year maintenance plan and make CIP recommendations to the full board. Um, and so I know Emily has been hard at work arranging that. Um, the town of Madison is conducting a facility study of all town buildings, similar to the one that this board conducted um, on the schools. Um, they have asked our board to recommend a location for an emergency shelter. And upon um, their review of um, the buildings and what was necessary and Bill's input on the schools themselves, um, it was deemed that Polson would be the most appropriate location. So the committee voted to advance this recommendation to the full board. Um, 
it would include coordinating uh, gener generator design with the proposed mechanical enhancements already in the school renewal plan. The fourth thing we talked about was the, so um, the Janssen property um, and um, soil studies have been conducted at the second proposed location for the new pre-K through three elementary school. Um, the studies were came back as favorable uh, for school construction on that site. And fifth, um, we talked about the school renewal plan. Um, we, uh, you know, talked a little bit about the public forum and some of the facility issues that um, came out of that. Um, happy to say that there was broad attendance and um, really positive feedback on um, that was given to the board at that um, workshop. Um, the Board of Selectmen is requesting that the Board of Education provide some feedback on a, on a preferred location, and I know that that is an action item later in our agenda. And then finally, um, and my all-time favorite, I can't wait till this is off the agenda, um, the carport construction um, at um, between Polson and the high school, um, which has been talked about probably close to the six years I've been on the board. Um, it is on track. Um, construction is set to begin and take place between June 15th and August 15th during the summer holiday. And that is the end of my report. Emily, you can take it from there. Thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate you covering for me. Um, the, the last thing I just wanted to share with the board is that there will be a special, as Katie mentioned, a special meeting at the facilities committee next Monday, June 14th at 5.30 to review the CIP plan for the 2022-23 year. So that was not on the um, dates of importance, but it, it will be and you will be invited to that special meeting to get that work done by July 1st. And that's it for me, thank you. Okay, thank you, Emily, thank you, Katie. And Katie, you did so well, you get to go up again. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there's no questions on the facilities, we, I'll move on to finance. Um, the finance committee met on um, May 25th, which was the night of our um, public forum on the school. So um, there was no report given at that time. Um, but at that meeting, we discussed um, the ESSER grants. Um, and I believe that was also in the superintendent's report that evening. So if there are any other questions, um, feel free to ask at the end of the report. Um, we also went over um, end of year projections. Um, and as we um, have been told, there was um, some deficit um, in our food services um, because of um, COVID and hybrid learning um, and less kids in school. And so um, Stacy's working hard to um, make sure that funds are encumbered so that we um, we'll be in good shape um, at the end of the fiscal year. Um, and we looked at line item transfers, which we um, addressed also in the um, forum or our workshop meeting as well. So um, I think a lot of that meeting was addressed in other parts of the board meeting that day. So unless there are questions, that is the end of my report. Okay, thank you, Katie. Any further questions or discussion? for um, finance. All right, thank you, hearing none. We'll move next to personnel led by um, Dr. McNerney. So both NAGE, which is the cafeteria workers and the Teamsters, which is our custodial staff, um, negotiations have commenced. They are continuing and we are looking forward to a swift resolution. And a report. So updates will be provided as they emerge. End of report. Okay, thank you, Violet. Um, any discussion, questions? All right, um, next up is policy um, and happy you are on deck. So policy committee also met May 25th, but I did give a report that night because there were some um, policies within the um, agenda. So I don't need to give another report about that meeting, but we do have third readings of two policies, um, 2110, which is administration positions, and then a third reading of 9540.10, which is meeting conduct. 
Um, Emily had a really good point about uh, some wording in the meeting conduct policy that was very specific to Zoom. Um, I don't know that we want to codify just Zoom <laughs> language. Hopefully this is a one-off, not a forever thing. Um, so I'm not sure because it's a third reading, what we do with that, if we have to take that back to committee, Greg, what do we have, what do we do with that? You, you do not have to, you just have to uh, discuss it while making the motion. Um, and I have one other question about it and that specifically. Okay, so that is the end of my report. We'll take questions. I, just, I think this is pretty straightforward, but I just wanna make sure we're absolutely clear on uh, that same policy on line 59, there's a note. And I, if I understand correctly, that's going to be excluded from the final version and that everything from line 61 onward will be in, included in the yeah. final version. That's I just correct. want to make sure we're clear on what we're voting on. That's right. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, I'm a little unclear, happy as to what the changes were. I did look at them in our board packet, but couldn't really tell what was new and what was not new. So could you just talk a little bit about Emily's um, suggestion? Yeah, Emily, do you want to just talk? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can talk about it. So if you're looking at the policy, um, my concern in particular was line 79 through 80 of the board secretary statement. It reads, if you would like to have your comments read, please ask them to chat, not questions and answers. And that is obviously very relevant right now, um, but not always in the future. So I was suggesting that, you know, maybe we put a, a parenthetical if meetings are conducted remotely comments may be placed in the chat box or something like it. it I, I don't want that to be codified as something we say all the time when we're not meeting remotely. No, I, I think that's really important. And I was just going to add, I, I um, remember hearing from um, Tom Mooney at one point that the chat box and the question and answer box um, because it's part of a public record and there can be a back and forth in there could be problematic um, because then it would become part of the minutes. Um, so I, I don't know if it's worth bringing that back to him and having him double check or if that's already been done. I, I can answer that piece. Um, I do know that it becomes part of the, the record. And so if there was, uh, um, not this board, but some boards when they, they moved to Zoom would hold conversations um, while the meeting was going on and, and that was problematic, certainly. Um, so the appropriate use is, is how this board is using it where the um, chat box or question and answer might come from the audience. So what would happen is that if we have information in there that would get printed out and be part of the um, minutes. So should, should we you just delete 79 and 80 and just take it out completely? Or could you begin that sentence with just the phrase for remote attendees, comma? Yeah, I think that's good because I would actually hope, even though we're maybe not going to be remote, mm -hmm. it, it definitely has increased public participation. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to take away that option. I totally that, agree. That's specific that. to Zoom. And what if you're not using Zoom? Or Zoom changes, and they call it, you know. In every service I use, I use uh, Teams, WebEx, Zoom, and that they all have the same exact feature. So I don't know that it. Um, well, I think as long I mean, as it's called the same? what it's called, yeah. then you it's can called use chat. Mm -hmm. for remote participants. I liked that yeah. Um, yeah. language that Greg suggested. I like that language too from Greg. Greg, do you have to like make a motion with an amendment in that or what do you do? I, I think the motion could just be made when we get to that point as amended when we discussed earlier. And that's that's sufficient. I have a question actually. So on my Zoom screen, I don't even see a chat option. Do participants, like I just see a Q&A down below. So I think Wendy and Wendy can probably, if she's there, speak to it. I think Wendy took that off when it started to become a back right. and forth between board members and members of the public and um, early on when we were getting to know the platform. Um, so we might on, make, the, make it even more vague then. Maybe we say, 
You can it, just say like chat functionality. Yeah, the chat or Q and A function. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Because I don't even see a chat here, and we explicitly say in the policy, please add them to chat, not questions and answers. So, chat functionality is perfect. That was my only comment for that policy. Anything else? No. Okay. End of report. Okay. Thank you, Happy. Um, all right. Um, since I do not think we had a learn liaison meeting, um, Katie. No, we meet, no, we meet Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, we will uh, move to uh, agenda item number 11, which is an action item. And this is a motion to recommend to the uh, Madison Board of Selectmen the purchase of the Jansen property. Um, so do we, great. <laughs> to be determined. Um, do we have a second, Diane, thank you. Is there a discussion? Yes, and you can lead it off. Is it before the vote, sorry? Uh, yes, no. yes, it's, it's now, thank you, yeah. yeah. Sorry, jumped ahead. Yeah. Um, can I speak? Yes, please. Yeah. So um, I will vote for the recommendation of the property of the, or for the uh, purchase of the Jansen property um, because I do understand the unreasonable fiscal outlay required to update our infrastructures and maintenance of our buildings. However, I want to express some significant concerns that were shared with me. Um, so I will just bullet a few of them and it's mostly for the record not for feedback but um, one of the things that was shared is the academy building vacancy and um, and how it's been vacant for so many years and it is it now being placed on hold um, since it's being left unaddressed in this new plan and will it be placed on the referendum as i said this is not for someone to necessarily give me feedback i'm just sharing the other um, share is the long-term plans for Island Avenue, because as we purchase this, nothing's been said about that. And another concern expressed was the demolition of Ryerson with no long-term plan for its land use and how Madison tends to do this. A little short-sighted in that we purchase, but we don't necessarily have long-term projected plans for what we've left behind. Thank you for allowing me to say that. All to the good, Violet. Thank you. Um, is there any other discussion or questions? Uh, Katie, please. So Dr. Cook, I just, my uncomfortableness about this is a motion without, I know that, well, I don't know. I, I guess it's hard for me to recommend a purchase without knowing the, the fiscal impact. Um, and so, you know, if this ends up being a $20 trillion purchase, then I would not recommend the purchase <laughs> of the Jansen property. So I, um, and I'm, I'm saying that um, obviously, um, you know, with my tongue firmly implanted in my cheek, but I, I, I guess I'm having a difficult time making a recommendation without knowing whether or not that changes the overall scope of the project. Um, in terms of, of the price tag um, and or um, for the town. And so again, when we first discussed this, um, it seemed to be that there was um, um, a one-off where it would save us money in one place. And so it would kind of be um, budget neutral. And so um, I'm, I was kind of hoping for that information before I put my vote in any one direction. So when I've spurred a lot of hands. I, I just want to say, yeah, because I was under the assumption that I knew the price, but I might be totally off. So thanks for mentioning that because who purchases sight unseen without a cost tag to it. So thanks. <laughs> Happy? So I think um, the language for this motion might be better to say something like motion to recommend the negotiation of the purchase of the property so that they can then like 
come back to us or we have a sense. I mean, I don't want to authorize the board of selectmen to go buy something. I feel like actually that's kind of like them passing the buck. And if people get mad, they'll be like, you guys told us to do it. Um, so I think it's better if we're, we're saying, yes, we want you to in good faith enter into negotiations, but knowing that- But we already did that though. Haven't we done that in another meeting? I don't think we most, we formally motioned for it. No, there was never there was never any formal motion. I'm comfortable with that um, change. The um, thing, you know, the board does not purchase our own land, you know, or, or buildings. So even um, our current buildings or our previous buildings, um, we we hold them, and then when when we are, are 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 done, then we give the keys back to the town. It's just how that how that works, and then the town makes plans for um, future use. In this scenario, it was. Um, discussed with the first uh with the with the uh, the board of selectmen in um executive session and so it's it's in negotiations i will say it's within um parameters that were were discussed previously with the board in executive session you know it's 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 pretty close to online with that and they have um given parameters to the first select woman to negotiate with the with the landholders that's pretty much the typical process that these go through since it's on the floor, I just want to, as a point of order, is there a specific language change being suggested for the motion? Yeah, Greg, I was going to ask if you would entertain a friendly amendment to change the language to recommend to the Board of Selectmen the negotiation of the purchase of the Jansen property uh, per what Happy said. A friendly amendment up to the motion accepted. All right. Um, thank you. Is there any further discussion on this? All right, so I'll reread the motion and then we um, can vote as a recommendation. All right, um, the motion is to recommend to the Madison Board of Selectmen the negotiation of the purchase of the Jansen property. It was uh, motioned by Greg, seconded by Diane. Uh, we've had a discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, all opposed? Abstentions? All right, thank you very much. Motion carries nine, nothing. Um, next up is uh, a motion to approve policy number 20, uh, 2110 uh, concerning administration positions. Do we have a motion for that? So moved. Thank you, Katie. Second. Do not need that. It's out of committee. We don't need it. Thank you very much. All right. Um, any further discussion on this motion? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, abstentions? Thank you, motion carries nine, nothing. Uh, we have another policy item to vote on. Um, and this one, um, I'm going to try to reflect some of the language changes that were discussed uh, in Happy's policy report. Um, and please feel free to, to correct me if I misstate something. Um, can we please have a motion to approve policy number 9540.10 uh, on meeting conduct uh, as amended to reflect um, the um, remote, the chat functionality for remote participation. So moved. All right. Thank you, Greg. Does not need a second as it's out of committee. Uh, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? And motion carries nine, nothing. Um, next up is a motion to approve the minutes of the May 25th, 2021 Board of Education meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, who is that, please, Violet? Thank you, Violet. Second? Second. Thank you, Tom. Um, discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? All right, we had perfect attendance. Motion carries nine, nothing. Um, please uh, feel free to um, uh, raise future agenda items, um, email or ask questions. 
We have meetings and dates of importance listed in our packet along with the special facilities meeting next 5.30 next Monday. Um, and is there any discussion or questions concerning those dates? Diane, now's your chance. Okay, going once, going twice. All right, um, you always have good insights and things that I miss. It's, all right, um, so uh, with that, um, do we have a motion for adjournment? Oh, thank you, Diane, all right. <laughs> Second? Second. Thank you, Katie. All right, uh, this vote, vote to adjourn the meeting at uh, eight, but good Lord, yeah, 838. Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Oh, come on, guys. All right. <laughs> no uh, abstentions? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.